I was not paid by any company or government to make this video. I do not condone, support or promote the regime of North Korea in any manner whatsoever. Please do your own research. North Korea. North Korea. The propaganda. Kim Jong-un, his regime. Human rights. Prison camps. The ballistic missile. An auto warm beer. It was a moment for the history books. The f I am not a journalist. I am just some kid with a consumer camera who was lucky enough to gain access into the most isolated and controlled country in the world. This video series is a product of that. show you that in just a second. Hopefully go into that room where you can walk into South Korea, across the line, and then come back into North Korea. That would be a truly epic experience because I've seen many people do it from the south to the north, but I've never seen people online do it from the north to the south. So hopefully that works out. And after that, hopefully come back to the hotel and then try and get a haircut. So I'll finish my coffee, we'll get on the road, and uh, in the meantime, check out some shots of this incredible view over Pyongyang here. at a rest stop on the side of the road, been driving it for about an hour and a half. The roads on the way to the DMZ are a lot better than the roads to the coast from Pyongyang, I guess because this road's used a lot more for the tourists they do get. It's a very interesting time to be going to the DMZ because just recently, on April 27th I believe it was, there was the peace conference held by the two leaders, the leader of South Korea and the leader of North Korea, held a peace conference down there. So it's a very interesting time to be going. And just after I leave North Korea, actually, there's going to be a big kind of agreement made again. And hopefully all this develops into a reunification of North and South Korea. So, you know, it's going to take a while, but, you know, it's a start and uh, it's looking like a really good step in the right direction. So a uh, very interesting time to be visiting and to be here. So the roads to the DMZ weren't that much different to what we'd seen on previous days of the trip. There was a slight difference though and that was that there were it seemed to be a lot more civilizations along the side of the road here. A few more villages and lots of houses you can see. You'll also notice that it looks like a lot less money has been invested into these small towns compared to Pyongyang or well, the center of Pyongyang anyway which has obviously had a lot more money put into it. Night and day difference between the capital city and the other settlements in North Korea. So we arrived at the DMZ. We were greeted by this sign here with the finger. I believe the writing says one Korea, the finger symbolizing one with the Korean peninsula in the background. We were introduced to our guide. I think he was a North Korean soldier. He was wearing the full uniform anyway. He was a really nice guy. He was quite interested in all the different countries we were from and things. All right guys, so we've arrived in the DMZ here, demilitarized zone between North and South Korea, so right now we're in kind of a neutral zone. Um, and then soon we're gonna go to the famous Blue Rooms where you can, hopefully it's open and we can walk across the, the border into South Korea. Uh, lots of military and things around here, uh, but not much else to say, let's see how it goes. We drove here through some land we weren't allowed to film. We went through a couple of checkpoints and big fences and 
guards and things. So, yeah. Let's go in. So this room here was where the papers were signed, I believe, between North and South Korea and the USA, declaring it a demilitarized zone. This is the chair where the papers were signed, I believe. All over the wall there's pictures of important times in Korea's history, especially later history. Here's Kim Jong-un here. Super interesting to just browse over and read all the different bits and pieces covering the walls. Then we continued, followed our guide, the soldier. Uh, you'll see these clips here up here on the right hand side. You can see the famous blue buildings here. So these are actually controlled by South Korea. North Korea doesn't actually control when they are open and closed. It's purely to South Korea to decide when they want to open them to tourists. Sadly, they weren't open uh, on this day for us. So I'll just have to come back another time and cross from the South Korean side. But yeah, heavily guarded as you can see on the North Korean side, especially. We didn't see any South Korean soldiers. I'm not sure what that was about. After seeing this place online so many times it was just truly amazing to see it in real life That's something that words can't really explain to be honest and the south korean flag was at half mast and so we're thinking that's why the rooms weren't open on this day because maybe something bad happened on korea on this day i'm not sure it was quite rushed to be honest i would have loved to spend more time there but they basically just took us there showed us for like hardly any time really and then we were rushed off to jump back on the bus <laughs> Thank you. Come, Sammy, then. Hello. So we arrived at this restaurant for lunch and look at the spread that they have for us. The lady slowly takes off all the different lids of these different kinds of foods. So delicious. Once again, we enjoyed this meal. They also gave us a North Korean alcoholic shot with it, which was interesting. From here, we drove to, uh, I think it was a museum of a university, to be honest with you guys. This wasn't that interesting to me, especially after we rushed through the DMZ. I, I really had wished to spend more time at the DMZ rather than coming to a museum and seeing more photos of you know the leaders who have visited this place and it is interesting to learn about different parts of Korea's ancient history but my main interest in this country as many other people is the more recent history and just kind of getting a feel for the place and the DMZ is so special so I really emphasize on the fact that I wish that I had been able to spend a bit more time there. Okay, so been in the bus for another hour or two hours. Now arrived at this viewpoint. It's good to get a bit of exercise. Just walked up from down here. I'll show you the view. Oh. Alright guys, come down from up there. I think now we're gonna hop in the bus and go to the Two Women Monument. That, that signifies North and South. Korea reunifying. It's a big famous statue, you might have seen it before. So. This is the first organized tour that I've been on. You do a lot of things in one day, I'll tell you. Um, it, it can be pretty <laughs> exhausting. It's necessary if you come to North Korea, so that's why I did it. It does have its advantages, but it's not really for me. I prefer to kind of do my own thing on my own pace and go to places that I really want to see. The museums and things, it's not really my style, uh, especially to film. You know, like I like to visit museums kind of, but to film museums, it's not really that interesting for you guys, uh, unless it's like a really standout museum. And then tonight we're going to the big famous hotel uh, that sits on the island. You've probably seen it if you watch any documentaries on North Korea and the recent uh, incidents that have happened there.
sorry about that really bumpy footage, but that's the best I can get on these roads. So we've arrived at the Three Charters for Reunification's Monument. Let's so check it out here. Pretty stunning. What it represents is hopefully one day the Korean Peninsula will be reunited as one country. And that's what they're working to, towards at the moment, which is cool. Big moment in time, so it's a cool time to visit the country. But uh, I'll show you some shots of this. So here I am, right where the day began this morning. Right now we're heading to dinner, and then we're heading to the hotel on the island. Hopefully they let us go up to the top floor, but you never really know. Big day, just a shame we couldn't cross into, the, into those blue buildings where you can step over the border. I'll have to go to South Korea and step over into the North Korean side when it's open, but super cool to uh, meet that soldier guy. And uh, he was nice, he was asking if there was any um, news that we had from like the outside world or about South Korea, you know, which was interesting. Anyway guys, um, I'm late, um, we better go. So here's another delicious dinner. That's not the main course. Here it is. Here's some fried tofu. Delicious. And this was some kind of a potato fritter thing. Really nice as well. And more salads and beer. And here is some like potato tempura, I think this is. After dinner we had a live show. So check out these clips of the live show. It's pretty cool. And then we arrived at the Yangakdo Hotel. So that's the famous hotel on the island in the middle of the Taedong River, the main river that goes through Pyongyang. The same place where the American student Otto was found taking down a political poster and sentenced to 15 years hard labor. So we went up to the 47th floor of this hotel, the very top. We had a beer on the very top with the group. We couldn't see much out of the windows. You can see I'm trying to get some clips here, but the reflection off the inside of the glass plus Pyongyang at nighttime isn't extremely lit up. I think they turned down the lights at, at a certain time. But yeah, still epic to go in that hotel and uh, explore it anyway. All right guys, so all done after a huge day. We went out for dinner, then we went up to the top of that famous, infamous hotel. Had a few beers with the group that we've been traveling with for the last 
eight days just said goodbye to them all it's funny actually i'm the only one going back by train tomorrow i'll be going back by train the rest of the group are flying but i'm going across the border by train which is a over a 24 hour journey i think it's 26 hour journey that's gonna be tomorrow so wish me luck for leaving North Korea and uh, getting into China by land. I kind of booked that extra um, because I wanted to <laughs> experience the, the land travel. I thought it would be super unique, something brilliant to document on this channel. We just had a few more beers downstairs, so uh, super tired right now. <laughs> this trip has been action-packed, but I've booked myself a haircut for like 8 o'clock in the morning. Right now it's 1 a.m., so... <laughs> Tomorrow we've got a haircut in the morning that I'm going to document and then I have to jump on the train after that and then head back to China. I don't think I have to say any more. Thank you so much for watching and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening and good night from North Korea.